All right, so today I'll be talking from the book Lost Connections by Johan Hari. And so yesterday I talked about um, disconnection from people and how that can be a leading driver in uh, depression or anxiety or just feelings of loneliness. And so today I'll be talking about a later chapter in his book that talks about reconnecting to other people. And so I'll start with an interesting point he makes in the beginning of this chapter, which is that we typically think of antidepressants as the pill we take on a daily basis to treat depression. But he says, what if we think about antidepressants as changing the way we live? So using targeted evidence-based methods of um, treating our depressive symptoms. Um, and he says that if disconnection is the main driver of our feelings of loneliness or depression or anxiety, then uh, why not look for ways to reconnect to others? And so he makes the point that in the West, we typically look at happiness um, with, with an individualistic perspective. So we have a lot of self-help or self-improvement books, and we say, like, you need to focus on yourself, your mental health. Um, and it's more focused about the self, whereas he contrasts that to Asian cultures, where a lot of it is more of a collective um, happiness is um, providing for your group and the people around you. So providing love and support for um, your social group. And so uh, he, he talks, he interviews uh, Dr. Brett Ford, who is a social scientist. And a lot of her research has shown that happiness is more of a social thing. And so uh, the evidence shows that we have this uh, inherent need for connection, security, and togetherness. And unless if we focus on that bond first, our sense of connection to others, then we're going to feel more lonely and as a result are more likely to feel depressed and anxious. Uh, so Johan says specifically himself, when he, in the past, when he has felt depressed and anxious, and in his book, he talks about how he's been on antidepressant medication for most of his life, actually. Uh, but he says that in most for most of his life, when he started feeling really depressed or anxious, he would do something for himself, whether it's going out and buying something um, or uh, watching a film. And so he says that um, once he learned of this and he started reaching out to other people, trying to help others or just make them feel better, he started feeling a lot better because the focus wasn't on himself. He realized that just by trying to help other people, he actually, just as a reaction, started started feeling better. And so he says that once he knew about Dr. Brett's research, he saw this error he had been making all this time. And so now that he says that even if you are in pain, you can almost always make someone else feel a little better. And so just by trying to do that, you might find that you yourself actually start feeling better. Um, so there's another thing that he talks about is he, he actually looks at the Amish community. And so uh, when the Amish turns 16 years old, they actually leave the community for a couple years and go live the modern American lifestyle. And with all the technology and everything that they don't have in the Amish community. And so uh, what we found is that 80% um, of people, when the, after the two years is up, 80% of people go back to the Amish community to live there the rest of their life. And so they have this choice. They don't have to go back, but 80% of people do. And so the question is why? And so Johan uh, interviewed a, a man named Freeman Lee, and he asked him a little bit about why he chose to go back to the Amish community. And and Freeman Lee was very honest. He said sometimes he miss, misses watching TV, watching a baseball game, or listening to a good pop song. Uh, but he makes the point that he, he thought about his family, and he just didn't think that having all this technology and all these distractions we have in our in our life was the best for raising kids. Um, we live in more of a rushed uh, environment, and so we're not always fully present with the people around us. And so um, he chose to stay in this uh, in the Amish community where he's fully present with his family and gives the children all the time and, and love and affection that they need. So uh, Johan goes on to say that uh, he asked he asked Freeman Lee a little bit more. And one of the things he said is that the Amish consciously choose to slow down. So and he compares um, human life to a warm uh, coal fire. So that's always glowing. And so if you take one coal and remove it and isolate it, it ends up um, burning out quickly, right? But he says, in the Amish, we keep each other warm by staying together. And so 
by doing that, they're, they're staying connected and, and staying loved with each other. And so, um, Johan goes on to talk about a major scientific study done in the 1970s on the Amish, and they found significantly uh, decreased uh, rates of depression in the Amish. And this has been supported by several other studies. But uh, Freeman Lee makes a, makes the point that this is why they have a deeper sense of connection, less feelings of loneliness, and greater feelings of belonging and meaning. Uh, so lastly, um, Johan says that we need to find a way to create a synthesis between uh, having that deeper sense of um, togetherness with people without necessarily having to adopt all the traditions and cultures of the Amish, um, because they do have some traditions that um, aren't probably aren't ideal for our um, American culture. And he talks about that more in the book. But um, he, he basically says that um, we need to create more of a sense of being present with the people around us and, and creating an environment where people feel more loved and affirmed on a daily basis. And especially people, if they uh, tend to feel more depressed or anxious at certain periods of their time in their life, that's when we really need to um, go out of our way to make them feel loved and reassured. And so lastly, Johan says that um, when you think about dying and, and going to heaven or wherever it is may be, a lot of people think, imagine it's interacting and being with your loved ones, right? So he says that, um, why wouldn't you choose that today while you're still alive to be truly present with the people around you? And I think that's an awesome point. Like we keep working so hard to achieve our goals and be, you know, I'm, I'm super ambitious, but I think um, the end goal, which is to, to just be around loved ones, we, we, a lot of us have that opportunity right now. And so uh, nothing's guaranteed in life, but I think um, we can choose to be um, more present with the people around us and spend even more time um, loving them and making them feel um, reaffirmed and uh, creating a deeper sense of belonging. So that's it for today, and I hope that helps. <laughs>